in this program, we are concerned to um, uh, focus on this language stuff and, and this question of managing consciousness. And I remember my experience when I was 11 or 12 as a, as a young boy, I had to make a, a trip uh, from our family business on South Walnut Street here in Bloomington to my dentist appointment, which was several blocks away on 4th Street at that time. Now, it was a, it was a dark, overcast evening, and, and it was winter. There were several inches of snow, and I was walking on a very narrowly shoveled sidewalk when an old man with a, a, a metal box hanging around his neck approached in front of me. And there was no one else in sight. I, 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 and as he approached, I could hear him mumbling something. And I, I was terrified. I was, um, but I was more scared of turning around and running. And so I, I continued toward him. And <clears throat> as we soon occupied the same space, I could hear him repeating, ah, uh, tamales and Nick, ah, uh, tamales and Nick, ah, uh, tamales and Nick, ah, uh, tamales and Nick. Now, in a moment that seemed to last forever, we, we, we passed each other. Now, I'm, I'm not certain if he ever actually noticed my presence, but I learned later from my father that I had encountered Hot Tamale Joe. Now, Hot Tamale Joe was a fixture in downtown Bloomington at the time. He was a legendary local character. Um, Joe likely had some mental challenges. Uh, nonetheless, someone once gave him an insulated box within which he could carry tamales hanging around his neck, and he could, he was a street vendor. And from this enterprise, he financially supported himself. Um, now, when Joe started his tamale business, the price of a tamale was a nickel. However, as a much older man, by the time I encountered him, the price of a tamale was now a quarter, 25 cents. But Joe was stuck in his marketing script in his mind. He was... He was never successful in replacing his interior word track with the line, hot tamales a quarter. Uh, he never got there, but he simply would at attempt to, to stop himself from announcing that they were a nickel by truncating his statement and saying, hot tamales a nick. Uh, now, Somehow this stupid little story contains much of the essence of what we are attempting to do in this program. N not selling tamales. Um, <laughs> well, well, the encounter with Hot Tamale Joe was full of emotion and it left a lifelong imprint on me. However, it was also full of awe and mystery and when awe and mystery and wonder are present, we encounter something deeper than a thought uh, or an emotion. We encounter a state of being. Um, some of us this last week, um, my friend Dave Tanner died and some of us knew Dave. Death has a way of quickly and reliably delivering our consciousness to a a certain element of awe, wonder, and mystery. His, his obituary made a point, a big point, about the significance of the fact that Dave was a, um, a lifelong Eagle Scout. And they focused on this because um, this was not an accomplishment. This was not a certification. This was a life posture that, um, that even the Boy Scout manual talks about as a life posture in the embrace of a lifelong posture or what, believe it or not, in the Boy Scout man manual, they talk about as a state of being. Now, I was very surprised to see this language coming out of the Boy Scout manual, but there it was. The program we are sharing is about 
abandoning, uh, releasing, letting go of much of the traditional language that is no longer effective in delivering us into our own deeps or in connecting us one to another and certainly as it relates to connecting in depth with this next generation. Now this program is about inviting us to practice a relevant and contemporary language of experience, a language and a poetry that's built upon states of being. Before any concept was a concept, it was first a state of being before any thought, word, or mythos was held in a human mind, it was first a state of being. Before God was God, God was and is a state of being. As the Dalai Lama likes to say, in nirvana there is no concept of nirvana. Uh, in heaven, no concept of heaven. You know, the fish does not know anything of the sea. Uh, when one is in flow, uh, one is not conscious of flow. When in God, one is not conscious of God. We are not seeking something to know. We are seeking a place to live, a place to be. This is what authentic life is all about. Now, many of us may have no idea what I'm talking about, and that's okay. That's why we're on this journey. Um, when I first encountered a community of people exploring this new way of talking 55 years ago, I was both intrigued and confused. Uh, after 55 years, I'm still intrigued and confused. Uh, this journey is still only just beginning. 